Hello, everyone. Welcome to join ATU online judges course. I'm Liu Xin, ATU Chamberlain Technical Committee President. In the last two weeks, we had two lectures for trampoline judges, one by me and the other by Mr. Moto, ATU Trampoline Technical Committee member. Today, we are pleased to invite Dr. Feng to give us third lectures. He's going to speak to us about uh, judging difficulty in trampoline and a brief introduction to double mini trampoline. Hello, Dr. Feng. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. Good. Yeah. Hello, Professor Liu. Good to see you again. Yeah. Okay. Are, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, Dr. Feng is an ATU Trampoline Technical Committee member since 2018. He's an associate professor at the University, City University of Hong Kong, teaching uh, social science. He has a doctor degrees from University of Warwick, Great Britain. He published over 20 journals articles in sports and uh, social science. He also served as editor and reviewer for more than 10 international journals focused on sports and health science. He obtained the FIG judging qualification since 2001 with judging experience in major FIG events, including World Cup, World Age Group competitions, Asian Championship and uh, Asian Games. Dr. Feng is uh, also executive committee member of Hong Kong Gymnastics Association. Okay, let's welcome Dr. Feng, please. Thank you very much, Professor Liu. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the third lectures for the judges in Asia. And uh, so today, my topic is uh, focusing on two parts. First is about um, judging difficulty in trampoline, and also I will offer a brief introduction to tumbling. So in this um, section, uh, we are going to talk about some rules and regulations, and uh, how some of the techniques and the strategies to um, uh, drop down the skills during the competitions and then also uh, it talks about uh, uh, difficulty values of uh, different skills and then uh, we also highlight some problematic situation during the competition so as a difficulty judge probably we're going to encounter different kinds of situation so I show you some of the examples and then more importantly uh, we will spare some time to do some video practice so uh, it would be a good idea for you to have a paper and a pen on hand later on, and then we will do some uh, practical sections together. Okay, and then um, the next part uh, talks about the tumbling, okay, and I highlight some basic rules, and also to have some uh, video practice on difficulties and execution judging. Okay, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, thank the AGU to support a series of online seminars for the judges' education, and which I think is uh, really important for the judges' community and also the gymnastics uh, community in the region. And uh, so in this uh, series of uh, lecture, so what we are trying to do is to share our experience with the Asian judges' community and uh, more importantly, we're trying to nurture more FIG judges right, in the region, okay? And uh, so basically there are some keys for helping us to acquire or maintain the qualification, okay? And uh, so hopefully uh, after this section, they can give you some ideas of how to uh, get yourself to familiarize with the latest rules and regulations in trampoline gymnastics. And uh, we also highlight some of the skills that commonly used in the current uh, major FIG competitions. As we, as we know that um, the skills that we use in the major competition is keep changing, 
uh, if you're trying to compare with the situation, say, a few decades ago, okay, day back in the 1960s and 70s, probably the routines and also the skills that involve in, in, in the competition is really different from today's standard, all right? And uh, so today we'll highlight some of the skills that we commonly use right, at the moment. And then um, I will also uh, briefly talk about some theories behind the skills, okay, and which I think is uh, really important. Right? Although we are, not all the judges are, you know, got in the coaching qualification or got a chance to coach the gymnasts, but then with some of the theories and skills um, 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 that we um, uh, about trampoline, it's really important for the judges to identify the skills and also to evaluate it accurately. Okay, and lastly, I think uh, practice is really important. So the practice is different sense. Uh, the practice may including um, the video practice, right? And of course, uh, if you can get access to the gym, and then you can see the gymnasts uh, who can perform the skills in action, and uh, yeah, it will really helpful for you. And uh, on the other hand, uh, you may also uh, trying to get more experience in uh, the competition. So if you got uh, chances to judge in the, uh, in the trampoline competitions, and then it can also help you to accumulate the experience, and uh, which I think uh, are really important Right, for us as a judge, right, to, um, 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 to keep ourselves updated and also um, just uh, uh, stay tuned with the latest news and regulations. I uh, just briefly introduce myself, okay? So um, uh, right now I am a AGU TRATC member and uh, as mentioned by Professor Liu, I acquired the FIG uh, qualification in 2001. And naturally I also obtained the trampoline judging qualifications both in Hong Kong and Great Britain, okay? And um, so here, just some of my background. And uh, so I would just briefly talk about some of the rules and regulations that we need to aware as a difficulty judge in trampoline. Um, as you can see on the bottom of the page, uh, there's a hyperlink. So I would highly recommend uh, you to have a look at it, uh, check on it on a regular basis. And uh, so there are a couple of documents which is really uh, important uh, for us as a judge. Okay, um, those documents are all related to trampoline gymnastics. So I just highlight some of the rules and regulations that I'm, I will use right, in this uh, seminar. And uh, uh, those rules and regulations can be downloaded from, from the link, all right? And uh, you may also see some uh, references that I put on um, different PowerPoint slides. So if you want to have more detailed elaboration on different pages, right, you may check with those uh, relevant documents, all right? So today's focus is about uh, um, judging difficulty. So uh, highlight uh, the duties of the judges for difficulty. Uh, according to the rules and regulations, okay, as a difficulty judge, uh, what you need to do is to check with the competition card uh, at least two hours before the competitions. All right? So here you can see the, uh, the picture that I took uh, during the World Age Group competition uh, last year in Tokyo. Right? And actually I was uh, checking with the competition card before the competition, all right? And then um, uh, we have to check with the elements and difficulty values entered on the competition card to ensure that it's free from any problems, all right? But if we find there's some, some problems like a missing requirements, uh, especially in the first routine, okay? So we have to notify the chair of judges panel, right, or CJP, okay? And uh, also during the competition, we can see there's a little red cut here. Okay? So if the gymnast performs something which is quite different from uh, the skills that they put on the competition card, so as a difficulty judge, you also need to use that uh, little red cut to notify right, the, uh, the others, right? they show it and, uh, and uh, um, it just show that uh, yeah, the gymnast has performed something which is different from the competition card. 
All right. There are also other rules, okay? And um, so as a difficulty judge, so we have to determine and record all elements performed it by the gymnasts using the FIG numeric systems. I guess for those experienced judges, probably uh, you're quite familiarized with those systems. But I will also later on spend some time to talk about the numeric systems so that uh, for the new judges or uh, the judges in the Asian communities who would like to acquire the qualification and they can give you some idea of how to use the system, especially during the competition, right? And um, we also uh, determined if the gymnast perform any intermediate jumps during the competitions. So if it happens, then we have to advise the CJP accordingly. And uh, also in the synchronized competition, uh, the difficulty judge will also uh, check with the skills of the gymnast to ensure that both gymnasts are performing the same elements. But if not, again, you have to notify the CJP. Um, in most of the FIG competitions, right, in the first routine, there are some specific requirements. Right? So later on in the later part of this uh, presentation, I will also highlight some of the problematic situation by using those uh, first routine as example. Okay? And they have different required skills and requirements. Right? So if the gymnast failed to meet, uh, to, uh, sorry, failed to meet those requirements, there will be a result of a penalty of 2.0 points, right? By each missing required element or requirement by the difficulty judges, all right? And um, with regard to the um, judges categories, right? and I think Professor Liu in the first section also briefly talks about um, um, different categories right, of the judges. And uh, as, actually as a difficulty judge, uh, it requires a lot of experience right, in order to take up this task. But according to the FIG general judges rules, right, uh, in most of the cases, uh, the, judges need to, uh, the judges need to possess at least category three or above in order to serve as a D judge in the FIG competitions. Okay? And uh, so for details, you may refer to those documents that I show uh, early on. Right? So those uh, PDF documents are all available on the FIG website. All right, so uh, let's move on to um, another uh, uh, important part. Right? As a difficulty judge, we need to learn how to um, describe the skills and how to drop down the skills in the competition. Okay, so in this section, I will talk about some rules and regulations about the difficulty calculation principles and the required body positions, and also the FIG numeric system and difficulty values. And then the last part, I will summarize in the skills that company used in the major FIG competitions. Okay, first of all, about the difficulty calculation principles. So basically, um, the amount of difficulty obtained in a single element during a routine is open, uh, especially in senior competition, okay? But then in junior competitions, uh, there are some restrictions, okay? So the reason why uh, there are some restrictions according to uh, the FIG expert is because uh, for safety. So they don't encourage the junior athletes to perform something which is really difficult, okay? because it may have some potential, um, you know, uh, uh, may cause a potential injury, okay? So therefore, uh, in the rules and regulation, it stated that uh, in the youth Olympic games, as well as the youth or junior competitions, they just have a limit on the skill. So it kept at 1.8 points per skills, okay? So in other words, if someone can perform a skills it worth 2.1 or 2.2, but then as a difficulty judge, you can only put down 1.8 maximum in that particular skills. And also quantiable summer source in youth competitions are not allowed it, and it will result in a disqualification from the competition, all right? And there are further uh, limitation on uh, the difficulty in a particular element, okay? Uh, so since in this section, we are talking about trampoline, 
okay? So we're focusing on here. So in different age group, we have different uh, um, a limitation to the difficulty, okay? Like uh, age 11 to 12 years, and then um, um, the maximum difficulty is uh, 1.5 points per skill. Okay, so again, for details, you may check with the World Age Group Competition Rules uh, documents, all right? Okay, um, another important thing that we need to talk about is the difficulty of each element. Okay, so basically uh, we got um, the following uh, principles, okay? Um, so according to the Code of Pawns, all right, uh, per quarter somersault rotation, Okay, so it's 90 degree uh, somersault rotation, it worth 0 0.1 point. For complete single somersault, so that is 0 0.5 points. For a complete double somersault, which is 1.0 point. And then the complete triple somersaults, 1.6 points. And then quadruple somersaults, which is 2.2 points. And then for twistings, right, uh, per half twist, uh, equivalent to 0 0.1 point. Okay, so basically with this principle, it can help you to calculate most of the skills that we can see in our sport. But of course, there are some other additional um, rules and regulations. So I will talk about it later on, but these rules it apply in most of the cases. Um, and uh, we also need to uh, pay attention to the first point, right? The size somersaults and elements without twist or somersault rotation have no difficulty value. And, um, and also uh, in elements combining somersault and twist, the difficulty values of the somersault and twist are added together, okay? And then, um, so I would like to draw your attention to point number three and number four, okay? So there are some, uh, uh, this part is a little bit tricky, especially point number three, right? We're talking about the single somersaults. That means um, a skills with a somersault rotation, 360 to 630 without twist, okay? Executed in either strict or pike position will be awarded an extra 0 0.1 points, okay? Now, I would like to draw your attention here right, because um, the key works here is without twist. For single somersault, you got this bonus. But what if uh, your skills got a twist, right? The single somersault, and then you did not get these extra points, okay? So that's why I give you guys some examples, right? Like a uh, brownie, pie position, okay? Or strict position is uh, also equivalent to 0 0.6 um, uh, difficulty uh, points, right? And um, also um, back foo. Okay, Rudy, double foo, um, it only got one single position. So later on, I also clarify why it is the case, right? So in this case, uh, back foo is uh, 0 0.7, okay? Rudy, 0 0.8, double foo, 0 0.9, because it's a single somersault, fist, okay? So it did not get the uh, additional points right, for the body position, okay? So this is really important because a lot of um, new judges may have the confusion, okay? And uh, so that is something we need to bear in mind, okay? And then for the multiple somersault, okay? That means uh, the somersault, the skills with a somersault rotation, 720 degree or more, with or without twist, executed in the strict or pie position, will be awarded an extra of 0 0.1 points per somersault, okay? All right, and uh, I will also need to clarify a little bit more about the body positions. So again, uh, the body position can be tricky, right? As a difficulty judge, because uh, if the gymnast performs strict or pie position, okay, and then they may have the additional point. And also um, uh, with different body position, it can also help you to differentiate, right? Whether the gymnasts have any uh, repetitions or in the synchronized competitions, whether the gymnasts are performing the same skills, all right? So first of all, here's are the rules and regulations uh, to, to define the way meaning of uh, different kinds of uh, body position. So for the strict position, 
okay? In the next PowerPoint slide, I will have some uh, 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 figures right, for illustration, okay? So basically, um, you need to concentrate on the angle between the upper body and the thighs of the gymnast. It must be greater than 135 degree, okay? So that is the requirement for the strict position. High position, okay? So the angle between the upper body and the thighs must be equal to or less than 135 degree. In addition, the angle between the thighs and the lower legs must be greater than 135 degree, okay? And top position, uh, again, you have to focus on the angle between the upper body and the thighs must be equal or less than 135 degree, and the angle between the thighs and the low angle, sorry, the lower legs must be equal to or less than 135 degree. So here is the illustration for the strict position. Right? So I would like to thank Peter right, from the British Gymnastics to share these uh, figures with me right, for the illustration. And uh, so you can see uh, uh, by definition, okay, this can also uh, classified as a strict position, but of course uh, is uh, poorly executed. Okay, and the left hand side is the ideal body shape for the strict position. Okay, and then for the pie position, okay, and uh, on the right hand side, okay, so you may see the poorly executed, uh, you know, pied, uh, uh position, okay? And the left hand side is the ideal one, all right? And then the legs, uh, legs one is the pied position, uh, sorry, the tuck position, okay? So uh, in this case, on the right hand side is also an example to show a poorly executed tuck position, okay? And the left hand side is the ideal one, all right? Okay, um, there are also a couple of uh, terminology that you need to be aware of, right, when you are serving as a difficulty judge. But of course, it's not mandatory, but then for easy illustration, because if you take a look at the code of points, uh, you will always see those uh, terminology, right? And uh, also during the competitions, when you communicate with the other judges, with those terminology, it will be easier for you to you know, discuss the skills with them. Right, and um, I'll just highlight some of the you know commonly used uh, FIG terminology. Okay, so for details, you will, you can cross check with the core upon right page fifty six. Right, uh, so back is a back somersault, front front somersault. Okay, and then ball. Out, okay, later on I will also got a video to show what is a ball. Out. That means a forward somersault from the back, and this commonly uh, used in the junior competitions and also in the first routine. As well as Cody, right? Cody is a backward somersault from the front, okay? So it's also uh, a skill set commonly see in the junior competitions. And also the first routine in the major FIG events, right? Triffus and triffus is to describe, the, you know, the double and also the triple somersault with chest, okay? And the next one is in middle and out, okay? So this is just help us to describe the number of twists showing the performed uh, element, okay? Let's say if it is a uh, double somersault, okay? Uh, with a uh, first phase with a half twist and then the second somersault with another half twist, okay? So using the FIG terminology, we'll call it a half in, half out, Fifths, okay, half in, half out fifths. Or using the FIG numeric system, we'll call it 811, okay. In the next PowerPoint uh, slide, I will uh, talk about it in detail, okay. And then Brani is a front somersault with half chest, okay. And then uh, half refers to half chest, okay, full. Um, uh, in the Double somersault situation, it can be first to a full twist. And then uh, if just got a full, it can be a, just a back full, right? Back somersault with full twist, okay? Double, okay? Uh, normally uh, in, um, as, uh, this refers to a uh, back somersault with a um, uh, double twist, okay? And then Rudy, okay? Front somersault with one and a half twist, 
uh, Randy is a front somersault with two and a half twist. Okay, and those terminology can be used to describe the multiple uh, somersault as well, right? Like full in, half out, fifths, uh, or uh, Woody in, Woody out, fifths. Okay, or uh, Woody in, half out, fifths. Right. Or if we describe the uh, triple somersault, right? it can be um, uh, half in, half out, trifles. Okay, so that is the combination of different terminology, which can help us to describe the skills that are performed by the gymnasts right, in the competition. Um, so the FIG limit system is uh, pretty important. Okay, so those are terminologies helping you to describe the skills. But then uh, in the competitions, because uh, we got the judges from all over the world, okay? So sometimes um, uh, we may have different uh, languages, right? But with the FIG numeric systems, we can easily communicate with, e with each other, right? By using the number, all right? And uh, so here, just highlight some of the examples, right? From the Code of Pawns, right? And um, um, the first digit, Okay, maybe we just take a look at, um, okay, uh, the 813, okay, this is example, right? the second skills, half in Woody out pipe, okay, so it's a double somersault, okay, in the first phase of the uh, somersault with a half twist, second phase with a Woody, this is one and a, uh, one and a half uh, twist, okay, so to present it with the FIG numeric systems, the first digit, Okay, describe the number of somersault in quarters. Okay, so in this case, it's a double somersault. So that means we put eight here. Okay, now if it is a single somersault, we just put four. Okay, double somersault, we call eight. If it is a quant uh, if a triple somersault, we put 12. Okay, if quadruple somersault, we put down 16. Okay, now the subsequent districts. Uh, sorry, the subsequent digits describe the distribution and quantity of treats in each somersault, right? So in this case, uh, the half in Woody out, so it's a double somersault, okay? Half, so it's a twist 180 degree, so we put one here. Woody is one and a half twisting, okay? So we put three here, okay? And then uh, we also need to describe the element the shape of the element with the symbol, uh, uh, like a circle, is a top, okay? Uh, this one is a, a pipe, and then this one is straight, okay? So therefore, uh, we put down here, okay? 813 pipe, okay? So that is how the FIG numeric system works. It helps us to um, record all the skills that are performed by the gymnasts. In the routine. So here is the calculation of difficulty. Okay, and um, um, I just uh, briefly talks about it. Right? And actually, this table is summarizing uh, the rules and regulation that we highlighted uh, uh, earlier on. Okay, so a quarter uh, somersault, uh, somersault rotation, it uh, valued zero point one. Okay, and then with a computer somersault. 0 0.1, okay? That's why a single somersault, okay? Tuck position, 0 0.5, okay? But if it is a uh, um, a free quarter, okay? Back somersault, okay? Uh, so it's, we call it the lazy back, and it's also a skill that company uh, see in the first routine, and only uh, with 0 0.3. Okay, because it's not a complete somersault, so it didn't get this bonus, all right? And um, um, for the uh, computer triple somersault, okay? 1.6, right, we mentioned it earlier, okay? And uh, now, here is the tricky point here. We talked about um, the somersault without a twist, okay, without a twist, single somersault without a twist, it can have a bonus for pipe or strict position. So therefore, one and a three quarter uh, pipe, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, 
evaluate the difficulty like this. Seal point next is the skills itself, one and three quarter. Okay. And then seal point one is the bonus from the pipe position. So that's why the skill itself it got seal point nine. Okay, seal point nine difficulty point. Right. But for uh Brani, that means it's a front somersault with half chits, strict position, okay, because this is a single somersault with chits, so it cannot get the bonus. Okay, so in this case, the Brani streak, it also got 0 0.6. So the value is the same as Brani Pike and also Brani Top. Okay, so that's why I said earlier, a lot of new judges may find it a little bit confusing because uh, the Brani with different body position, they have the same difficulty values. It's because we have a specific rules to show that single somersault with twist, it cannot get the bonus. All right, so that's why Brani Street, we only got 0 0.5 for the front somersault, okay? And then uh, half twist, 0 0.1, okay? So even you got the strict position, we don't have any bonus here. So that's why it got 0 0.6, all right? Uh, here are more uh, examples, okay? So I'm not going to uh, go through it uh, one by one, right? So basically, uh, the way how we calculate the difficulty is based on the equation uh, and, and also the relevant rules and regulations we talked about it earlier, okay? And um, so for details, you may also refer to the Cocoa Porn, right? Page 51, and uh, it got more examples for illustrations. All right, okay, uh, now we move on to another pretty important part. That is how to recognize and jot down the skills. And a lot of new uh, judges may find it difficult to jot down the skills right, uh, by using the FIG numeric systems. Because in the competition or in the, in the routine, okay, you only got around one to two seconds to jot down each skills. Right? A routine, it consists of 10 skills. Right? And then even for the really top tier gymnasts, okay, so the routine itself, including all the airtime and also the touching on the trampoline, maybe like a 20 second or maybe less than that, okay? Or if you just kind of time of fight, right? Um, in the competitions, a really good gymnast may have a 17 or 18 seconds for the entire routine. So in this case, um, you only got the one to two seconds to recognize the skills and also jog it down on the paper, right, during the competitions, okay? So that's why you require a lot of skills and techniques to jog down the skills accurately, okay? So here are some tips which I can share with you guys, all right? Because uh, as we uh, talked about it earlier, right, in the competition, we have to mark all the skills using the FIG numeric systems. Okay, so we have to put down the first digits, right, to describe the number of somersault, the subsequent digits, describe the distribution and quantity of tricks, as well as the shape of the elements, all right? So again, we can use the example of half in, half out pi, okay? So 811 pi, okay? So the skills itself, it, uh, here's the breakdown, right? Uh, the 811 pi, it got uh, 1.4 difficulty value, okay? So if we break it down, okay, because it's a double somersault, so it's 1.0, okay? And then the twisting, first phase of the somersault with half twist, so 0 0.1, and then the second somersault, another 180 degree twisting. So we one plus one, so that's, that's why for the twisting, it got 0 0.2, and then because it's a pipe position, it's a double somersault, so it also got a bonus of 0 0.2. Okay, so that's why this skills, it got 1.4, all right? Um, so when you do the um, uh, evaluation of the skills in the competitions, uh, of course, it's difficult for you to write down everything, okay? And uh, so here are some tips, right? Now, first of all, I think uh, no matter which position that you're doing on the judges panel, we always need to keep an, keep an eye on the gymnasts, right? And we also need to pay special atti uh, attention in the takeoff and the firing phases okay, of the skills because it can help us to identify the shape of the element. Because uh, apart from dropping down the skills that performed by the gymnast, we also need to mark the body position 
okay? So that we can uh, evaluate whether there's any bonus and also any repetition of the skills, okay? But then the, it happens quite often for the new judges if they judge the single somersault, okay? They just emphasize on the skills, okay? And then without pay attention to the body shape of the elements. And after the gymnasts are uh, opening the somersault and, uh, and also do the keeping, like uh, the, uh, the last phase of the skills, it's really difficult for the judges to determine the body shape, right? Because they already opened the somersault, right? And uh, so that's why we have to pay special att attention in the takeoff and flying phases where the gymnasts will show the body shape of their skills. And we have to remember that, all right? And then another tip is uh, normally, we don't use a lot of symbols to describe the skills on your draft paper, okay? And uh, now, it's also based on my experience. I also cross check with uh, some of the literature, okay? So some psychologists, uh, they like uh, they back in the year 2001, like uh, Cohen, suggest that, uh, well, the human being got some uh, limited capacity of visual short-term memory, okay? So when we um, uh, perceive a skills, right, during the competitions, okay? And uh, once we recognize it, okay, so it's using our short-term memory, right? And, uh, but then we cannot uh, remember too many things, right? Uh, like later on, uh, some scholars uh, from the Harvard University, it also uh, conducts similar kind of um, experiment. And then it shows that normally uh, the human being can manage to uh, remember not more than four symbols, uh, you know, uh, uh, for short-term memory. So in this case, if we apply it in, um, you know, the difficulty judging, okay? So I would normally recommend the judges to use two to three symbols to describe each skills, okay? Otherwise, uh, if you're using too many time to mark it, uh, you may running out of short-term memory and you may require more time right, to drop down the symbols. Okay? So that's why two to three symbols should be uh, enough right, to mark the skills. So if we, here are some examples. Right? If the gymnast perform a, a two one pipe, so that is a three and a half out right, pipe. And uh, so on your paper, you only mark two one pipe. Okay? So you don't need to put that eight in front of it, okay? Only three symbols is good enough, all right? Because you know that um, you got two numbers, right? So it will involve two phases, okay? So it should be a double somersault. If it is a triple somersault, like uh, the 12 CO3 pi, that is a uh, Rudy out Triffis, right, pi. And uh, so you may write down CO3 pi or like this. So it's, um, there's no um, absolute right or wrong symbols, right? As long as you can recognize it, okay? And then uh, you can mark it accurately and it should be all right, right? Similarly, for the um, strict back somersault, okay? And uh, the layout, okay? So you may write down four seal straight or seal straight or um, a hyphen uh, straight, okay? Oops, sorry. And um, uh, so that is uh, some little tips for you to mark down the skills because you only got one to two seconds right, to drop down each skills, right? And um, so when the routine is complete, as a difficulty judge, we need to check uh, to, uh, the entire routine to see if any missing requirements and or repetitions, okay? So that is pretty important. And you also need to calculate the difficulty scores based on instructions of the CJP, right? Okay, here are some examples that actually uh, from my draft papers, right, during the competitions when I was serving as a difficulty judge, okay? So you can see, I just put down two one strict here as, and it just uh, refers to a eight two one strict. So it's a three and a half hour strict position, okay? Now, uh, ignore those uh, figures, right? Because uh, when I was uh, marking the skills, I just put down two one straight, one one pipe, 
two one pi one one uh, tuck, so on and so forth. After the gymnast completed the routine, and then I will start to mark all the skills and then trying to calculate the total. Okay, so it's impossible for you to put down two one pi uh, two one strict and then you calculate the difficulty during the routine. No, don't do this. Okay, just put down two one strict and then the, the others after the gymnast completed the routine, you start to do the calculation. Okay, and uh, so that is the way how we mark the difficulties right, during the competition. All right. So there are some uh, keys, right, to uh, success in uh, difficulty evaluation, right? Uh, first of all, uh, we need to familiarize with the commonly used skills and its technical aspect. And that is really important, especially like um, biomechanics, right? The physics behind those skills, right? And i uh, just highlight some of the examples, right? If you check with the literature, right, there are some scholars who, um, conduct uh, some really good uh, research on uh, somersault rotation and also the twisting techniques, right? Of course, <laughs> we, um, not that all the judges need to, you know, familiarize with uh, all the, you know, scientific aspect, but then we need to know some of the, you know, basic uh, principles, right? For example, uh, if you take a look at the work that written by Professor Yadin, okay, so he published a lot of papers, talks about, uh, how to generate the off-center forces right, for maximizing the somersault rotation. So as a judges, it's important for us to take a look at those, uh, you know, concepts. And then uh, it can help us to understand uh, the physics behind those uh, double, triple, or even quadruple somersault, okay? And also the twisting somersault. Um, um, if you take a look at the literature, Okay. Again, Professor Yadin also uh, published uh, quite a few papers uh, to conceptualize uh, different types of twisting techniques, right? And uh, like uh, uh, the skills that we always see in the competitions, it, which involve a lot of twisting, okay? Like uh, ik 4 4 uh, also known as the Miller Plus, okay? Or the ik 5 right? Like uh, 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 Randy Ao. Okay, uh, and also half in Randy L, eight one five. Okay, and uh, so actually, those literature it talks about how the gymnasts can make use of the arms and hips um, uh, to generate the asymmetrical movements, okay, of the body, so that it can accelerate the twisting of the gymnasts during the skills, right? And um, so that is something we can take a look at it as well. And also the initial properties in twisting somersault. So again, uh, some of the literature talks about uh, like a whole twist techniques, right? And uh, and also um, some of the body position, uh, like in the pipe position, right? If you take a look at here, pipe is a useful posture to enter following a continuously twisting somersault to stop the twist. Okay, so if we know this concept it can help us to understand why the gymnast can perform the full um, half out pipe position. So in the second somersault, uh, they don't have any twisting. And uh, if they perform the top, uh, pipe position, it's easy for them to stop the twisting, okay? Similarly, you can find the skills like uh, full in half out pipe and also uh, Rudy in half out pipe, a Q1, X31 pipe, and those skills also involve this kind of, uh, you know, uh, techniques in twisting somersault, okay? When they do the full twist, okay, in the first uh, somersault, and then they change the pipe position, and they can stop twisting, then the gymnast can have good control of the skills, and then they just do the opening, and then uh, to have a holy twist, and to finish the skills, right? And uh, so those are some uh, skills, technical aspects right, that related to biomechanics and which can help us to identify the skills and also to understand how the gymnasts perform the skills. Now here I will summarize some of the skills that commonly used in the major FIG competition. Okay, and uh, so I just extracted some of the videos and then it involved some uh, single somersault 
and also some uh, uh, double somersault that we can normally see in the first routine. And you also see the combination like a lazy back back coding, right? So here on the left hand side is the back somersault in different positions. Okay, let's see. Okay, and then right hand side, I will show the Brani, right, 4 1 in different body shape, okay, in tuck position, pie position, and strict position. Okay, and then the next one is uh, uh, 4 3, it's a Rudy. Okay, on the right hand side, and the left hand side is the back full, 4-2, okay? So Rudy is a front somersault with one and a half twist, okay? And back full is a back somersault with a full twist. Okay? And then the next one is the combination, okay? Uh, in the FIG terminology, we briefly talk about the lazy back, back Cody, okay? And also the um, a bow out, okay? So in the left hand side is a lazy back, okay? That means a three quarter somersault, strict position. And then with a uh, back Cody, okay? So we put it three zero strict and five zero top, okay? So in the left hand side is a combination of the, these two skills. Okay, and the right hand side is another two skills that the gymnasts uh, always use in the first uh, routine. That is a one and three quarter uh, pie position and then the brownie ball out, tuck, okay. Okay, and then lastly is the double back somersault, okay and also the half out, okay? Left hand side is a double somersault, double back somersault. Huh? In tuck and pipe position, okay? And the right hand side is the half out, okay? It's a double front somersault with half chest, okay? Again, it show in two different position, tuck and the pipe position. All right, um, here are the summary of the skills that we may see in FIG competitions uh, in the second routine or finals, okay? And uh, here I categorize the skills into two different columns, all right? Because for the multiple somersault, okay? Um, normally in, uh, um, in the routine, the gymnasts will perform uh, one from the left hand side and then the one from the right hand side. It just take turn, okay? Uh, because it involves, um, you know, the, the technical aspects of the skills. It will be easier for the gymnast to perform it, especially in some uh, difficult skills, okay? And it involves multiple somersaults, right? So that's why if you check with the uh, routine, um, especially in the senior competitions, you will see that the gymnasts will perform 12 CO3 pi, and then 12 101 pi, and then 12 uh, one, uh, CO3 one pi, okay? something like that. And then also uh, 12 101 top, and then with 12 uh, CO3 one top, okay? So it's just uh, back and forth, right? One front and one from the back, okay? And uh, so if you familiarize with those, um, you know, uh, patterns, it will be easier for you to recognize your skills, right? Because uh, after the gymnast perform the front sotto, right, start from the front sotto, you expect that the next one will be from the back sotto, okay? So if you see the gymnast perform like the last two skills that uh, commonly used by the gymnast, especially the male gymnasts in the competition, the live skills, sometimes uh, they use eight, two, three strict. It's a full, uh, full in, woody out, right? Strict position. And then the last skill is eight, three, three, 
right? Woody in, Woody out straight, okay? Or Miller, okay? And uh, uh, because uh, it's following this kind of uh, pattern, okay? And also one more thing, for uh, those skills stuck from front sotto, okay? Normally, uh, uh, it ends with uh, one, three, or five, okay? So it didn't it end with a half twist, okay? At least a half twist, okay? Or a one and a half twist, okay? And then with a back soto uh, skills, okay? Normally, when you combine together, it's a completed twist, okay? Like uh, 12, 101, okay? And there is a twisting of uh, 360 degree, okay? Or a Miller. Okay, it's a you know twisting. Uh, it is a triple twisting. Okay, and um, or uh, half in half out. Okay, it's also a uh, completed uh, twist, a three hundred sixty degree. All right. Um, so that is some uh, additional little tips for helping you to identify those uh, skills. And there are also some skills uh, you may expect to see in the competitions, but not really common. But then uh, we also need to bear in mind that there are some skills that may also used by the gymnasts right, in the competitions, right? Like this. All right. Now let's move on to take a look at some programmatic situations, okay? Which including the repetitions, right? So another major task that need to handle by the difficulty judge, and also the disputes in difficulty judging, okay? And then I'll show you some examples of some routines with the missing special requirements and how are we going to deal with it. For the rep repetitions, so basically uh, as a difficulty judge, uh, there are two factors which can help me to help us to decide if an element is a repetition, which is the quantity and phase of this and quantity of somersault, okay? So in, uh, in this case, uh, if a skills with a twist from zero to 180 degrees, okay, it can up to three positions are possible, provided that uh, there is a 270 or more somersault. Okay, so in this case, we have a uh, ball brand, a brandy ball. Okay, we can have three different positions, okay, because it fulfills this criteria. All right, or uh, uh, Brani, okay, it also have three different positions, okay, the uh, uh, back somersault, it can also entitle to have three different positions, right, but then I would like to draw your attention to uh, the second point here, okay, when there's a twist of 360 or more, okay, three position are possible provided that uh, there is more than 450 degree of somersault, okay? And um, uh, so if we perform a somersault with more than 450, and uh, so we can have um, uh, three different position, we need 360 or more, okay? Uh, but I would like to draw your attention because of this uh, rules, and regulations, okay? So there are some skills, right? Like uh, uh, booty ball, okay? And uh, also um, 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 back full, booty, and double full, okay? They only got one uh, body position, okay? So we have to bear this in mind, which is really important. Let's say in a synchronized competition, if there are two gymnasts, performing uh, the 4-2, okay, back full, okay? So if one gymnast perform a strict position, right, it's all right, it's perfect, right? But then the other one, it perform a tuck position, okay? So if you are the difficulty judge, okay, uh, uh, you don't count it as a uh, problem because um, um, for back full, only got one uh, position. Okay, only one position, one body position. And it's just a matter of poor execution, okay? So it won't uh, treat it as an interruption, okay? And so that's why this rule is also really important. And a, a lot of new judges may have a lot of confusion on this, okay? But anyway, you may also refer to the Cook of Pawn, page 37, for detailed elaboration, right? So in multiple somersaults, 
the gymnast may claim only one body position per element. So it's tucked, pied, or straight. So the difficulty judge will assess the element based on the least difficulty body position adopted by the performer. Right? And uh, so in uh, somersault of 540 degree or less than one phase is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, unless only one phase is recognized it, and an element will be considered a repetition if it does not meet the criteria listed above in aspect of different shapes. And also uh, in some sort of 630 degree to 900 degree, two phases are recognized, okay, early and late, okay. So all multiple, summers, uh, all multiple twisting double somersault in layout or pie positions with the same amount of twisting rotation performed without a recognizable pulse in twisting rotation or without defined position will be considered as repetition if used more than once. Okay, so those are the rules that also uh, are relevant uh, for the difficulty judges. Okay, and um, also um, when we evaluate the body shape of the uh, of the skills, okay. So for summer, uh, for single somersault, okay. So the difficulty judges should evaluate the position of the element from the beginning of the takeoff up to the remaining 130 degree. That means before landing. But in multiple somersault, it's a little bit tricky, right? Just uh, uh, related to um, you know the somersault rotation that we mentioned earlier because uh, if the gymnast need to perform a multiple somersault, like a double or triple somersault with multiple twisting, okay? So it involves a huge amount of um, off-center forces, okay? So in this case, uh, uh, they need to um, do a lot of preparation to generate those off-center forces. So that's why for the backward somersault, okay? So uh, like the figures here above, okay? Um, uh, we evaluate the position of the elements, okay? Uh, 90 degree up to the remaining 180 degree, okay? And also for forward somersault, okay? So we judge it from the 135 degree up to the remaining 180 degree, okay? So that's why if you take a look at the three and a half hour strict position, uh, it's a forward somersault, okay? So in the beginning, because the gym need to generate the off center force right, for the skills. And then uh, they need to take off with uh, something like a pie position. But actually it's no, uh, because uh, it related to the biomechanics right, and also technical aspects of the skills. So that's why it requires the gym, the gymnast required to do this in order to compete the skills nicely, okay? So therefore for a two three strict position, if you use a slow motion, you always see that in before 185 degree, and then you will see something like a pie position, but uh, as a difficulty judge, we need to aware of this because um, uh, the rules suggest that uh, we have to uh, evaluate the position of the elements uh, you know, after 135 degree, okay? So that is something we need to aware. And another controversial issues that may encounter by the difficulty judges in complete twisting. Okay, so in the rules, we also got a specific uh, section to talk about it, okay? So uh, we need to looking at the position of the feet and landing, feet rotation of more than a quarter twist is considered a half twist, okay? Feet rotation of more than three quarter twist is considered a full twist. Okay, uh, lastly, about the missing requirements. All right, so here I just highlight some of the requirements that we see in the major competitions uh, in Asia and also um, those are FIG events, okay? First one is the world age group competitions, okay? So there are four different age groups, okay? And um, um, I just, I'm not going to talk about uh, talk all but of it and uh, I will show you the hyperlink and then uh, you can, um, you know, have a look at it for details, right? I just briefly talked about uh, the like uh, 11 to 12 years uh, age group, okay? So here, we actually got four uh, requirements, okay? The routine consists of 10 different elements and only two elements allowed 
with less than 270 degrees somersault rotation. And each element meeting the requirement must be marked with an asterisk okay, on the competition cut. And this requirement cannot be fulfilled by combining them into one element. In other words, uh, you have to uh, perform as a separate elements. Okay, so in addition to this requirement, uh, in the first routine, you need to have at least one element landing on the front of the body, and also one element landing on the back of the body, and also one element with 360 degree somersault rotation with at least 360 degree of twist. Okay, so that means the minimum requirement is a uh, uh, Rudy, okay, 4-3, uh, sorry, 4-2, okay, uh, uh, back full, okay, back full. So in different age, uh, age group, they have different requirements. Okay, so the gymnasts need to fulfill it in the first routine. So for details, you can check with this uh, FIG document. It will show you the latest requirements for the age, age group competitions. So here's an example. So if you are the difficulty judge okay, for uh, 15 to 16 age group, okay, in the first routine, now of course in the competition card uh, should be all right, okay? But then in the actual performance, when the gymnast uh, perform the following skills. So you just mark down those skills, right? Um, and then the, you need to cross check with the requirements, okay? So in this case, the gymnast managed to fulfill the requirement one, okay? Requirement two, and also requirement four, okay? But then there's one missing requirement. That is number three, okay? Now, we go back to have a look, 15 to 16 age, okay? Uh, element one, uh, sorry, uh, requirement one, okay? One element to front or back, okay? So this is lazy, lazy back, so it's all right. And then the, the second one, one element from back or from, from front or back in combination with requirement number one. So in this case, is a back holding. So combine it together, so it's all right, okay? So fulfill the requirement number two, but then the problem is here. You need to have one double somersault, uh, either back or front, with or without twist, okay? So in this case, the gymnast didn't perform any double somersault. So that's why uh, requirement number three is missing. Requirement number four is all right. Uh, number four is a minimum of uh, 540 twists, a minimum of 360 degree somersault rotation. Okay, so in this case, it fulfilled the, the requirement. So if you encounter this situation, there will be a penalty of 2.0 points, okay, by the difficulty judge. Okay, uh, here's another competition uh, for juniors, and they also have a specific requirement. So which is quite relevant to us because in Asian, junior championships, we also adopt this uh, requirement, okay? So we basically got five uh, criteria, okay? The first one is um, uh, uh, you need to have a routine with at least lies skills, right? More than 270 degree of somersault rotation, okay? And then one element to the front or back and then in combination with requirement number one, and then one double front or back somersault with a without twist, and then one element with a minimum of 540 degree of twist and minimum of 360 degree of somersault rotation, okay? So here's the example. So if the, the gymnast perform like this, okay? Now, he or she may fulfill requirement one, two, three, and four, but there's one requirement missing, right? because it required to perform, okay, uh, nine skills with a 270 degree of somersault rotation. Okay? In this case, um, this gymnast performed a tuck jump and also a two feet. So these two skills are not uh, fulfilling the 260 degree of somersault rotation, okay? So because of that, um, it's just a missing one requirement, okay? And then uh, there will be a penalty of 2.0. All right, and here's another example. So uh, it's more relevant for the senior competition, okay? So requirement for the first routine of FIG events, okay? So basically, um, they are following requirements, okay? So the routines will consist of 10 
different elements, each with a minimum of 270 degree of summer rotation. And then four elements in the first routine marked with an asterisk on the competition card will have difficulty waiting. And then those skills okay, cannot be repeated in the second routine of the qualifying round. Otherwise, the difficulty will not be counted. Okay, so here is an example. Uh, left hand side is the first routine in the qualifying round. Right hand side is the first routine. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, it's the second routine of the qualifying round. Okay, so in the left hand side, if the gymnast mark the four skills here, so count the difficulty values. All right, but then in the second routine of the qualifying round, maybe the gymnast uh, got an accident or something, so it just uh, failed to perform the original skills. So it end up, he may do a double back somersault to save the routine. So in this case, he still managed to complete the routine, but then as a difficulty judge, we need to detect this problem, okay? Because in the first routine, it already have this, um, uh, you know, double back somersault count uh, for the difficulty. But then in the second routine, uh, the gymnast perform it again, so it didn't count the difficulty. Okay, so that is how we handle this kind of problematic situation, right? Okay, so after uh, we talked about those um, 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 different kinds of situation, let's have a video practice. Okay, um, so for those who would like to do the practice, you can ignore the answer on the right hand side. Okay, and then um, I just uh, do the uh, uh, judging right, based on the videos on the left hand side, okay? And then you may cross check with the answers, right? Later on with the table on the right hand side, okay? So here you are. Okay, and then we got other videos. And uh, as you can see here, um, I trying to select uh, the difficulty, um, um, the skills, uh, mainly from the first routine. Okay, and later on we can see some uh, more difficult routine. Okay, so you can try to see the differences. Now it's based on those a single somersault. Okay, so those are the skills that I highlight to earlier, right, for those, uh, you know, skills that commonly see in the first routine. Okay, so that is another routine. So another first routine. And then um, that is um, the competition in Asian Championships, uh, the junior competition. Okay, another example from the Asian Championships.
All right, and then um, that is um, um, the video from the World Championship, and um, so you expect to see more double somersault here. Okay, and then uh, we'll see another um, uh, routine. And this one uh, with a DD total is uh, 13, above uh, 13.0. Okay, so you can see, uh, you also expect to see more double somersault here. Okay, the next one is um, um, a female routine. And uh, so you expect to see in the, those uh, really top tiers of female gymnasts in the second routine or the final routine, okay? So it also involves a lot of, a combination of triple and double somersault. Okay, and then um, this is um, another routine, but then I uh, would like to draw your attention uh, to the last skills, right? Do remember to drop down all the skills, okay? And uh, that is really important, all right? So let's see. All right, and uh, so it's a little bit tricky, but then uh, if it happens in the competition, and uh, still you need to mark down all the skills and then also wait for the instruction from the chair of the judges panel to determine how many skills. Right? If it is a 10 skills, and then uh, yeah, you have to give a correct uh, difficulty values for this routine. And lastly, um, as another routine, and uh, this one is uh, really difficult. So if you manage to drop down all the difficult, all the skills in this uh, routine uh, correctly, and probably you don't have any problem to uh, to judge, uh, you know, um, other routines right, in the trampoline gymnastics. Okay. Okay, so we just finished the first part about uh, um, judging difficulties in trampoline. And uh, now I move on to the second part to briefly introduce uh, the tumbling, okay? So in this section, I will focus on three different aspects. 
the first one it briefly talks about the general rules in tumbling and then I will briefly talk about how to evaluate the difficulty and execution. For the general rules, okay, and uh, in tumbling, it also come with individual and team competition. So in individual competitions, uh, it consists of four one to three passes with eight elements in each pass, okay? It also got qualifying rank and finals. In qualifying ranks, there are two one to three passes with no repetition of elements allowed it in either pass. And also there are two one to three passes in the individual final, again, with no repetition of elements allowed it in either passes. Of course, there are also some additional rules and regulations I will talk about in the next part on slide. In team competition, uh, the regulations uh, basically uh, the same as the trampoline team competitions. So you can check with the Kokopon Okay, 2.1 in the trampoline section. And then every members of the team will perform two one to three passes and one one to three passes in the final. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to briefly talk about uh, some additional uh, information with regard to the passes. Okay. So each pass, uh, as we mentioned earlier, consists of eight elements. And the first and second passes of the qualifying round must be performed without repetition of an element in either of the passes, but with some exceptions. There are three skills uh, that we can commonly find in tumbling uh, passes, which including the fit facts, the rip backs, or uh, some people call it the tempo sotto, and run off. Okay? So these three skills can be repeated. Okay? Other than that, no element may be repeated during the two passes of the qualifying round. Otherwise, the difficulty of the repeat element will not be counted. And the passes in the final must be performed without repetition of the element in either of the passes. Okay? And then in the final passes, the same element may not be repeated with the exception of the three skills that we mentioned earlier. Okay? Otherwise, uh, the difficulty of the repeat element will not be counted. And in the final, a gymnast may repeat element or a pass performed in the qualifying round. And here I would like to draw attention to the last point. Again, a lot of new judges may have uh, some confusion on this, okay? because if you see the video, you'll see a lot of gymnasts may perform uh, the same skills in the pass, right? And why is that? It's because in the rules, we state that somersaults will not be considered as repetition if they are preceded by a different element. So here example, if the gymnast perform a run off, okay, and then with a uh, double back strict somersault, okay, and then the temple, temple, and then double back somersault, strict. In this case, the skills double back somersault is the same. But then before the double back somersault, the skill is different. So in this case, it will not consider as repetitions. Okay, so this is really important. And then the first pass in the qualifying round, uh, we call the Soto pass, okay? So there's some special requirement on this. No element may contain more than 180 degree of twist each. And any violation will result in the difficulty of those elements not being counted. In the second pass in the qualifying round, we call the twisting pass, okay? A minimum of two somersault with at least 360 degree of twist in each. And each violation will result in a penalty of 3.0 points from the difficulty judges, okay? And the laugh, sorry, the, the eighth element will not be counted for difficulty if it is not a twisting element, at least 360 degree of twist. And there's some additional requirement for the final, okay? Two free passes in the individual final and one free passes in the team final, all right? And then pa passes, comprising less than three elements will score zero. A tumbling pass must move in one direction only, but however, there's an exception, okay? A single element in the reverse direction is allowed at the end of the pass. That means the eighth element. And all completed passes must end with a summer source, okay? So those are the basic rules and regulations that related to tumbling. And then the, for the judges panel, of tumbling, uh, 
It consists of eight judges, including one CJP, five execution judges, and two difficulty judges. And I will briefly talk about the evaluation of difficulty, okay? And uh, again, for details, you can refer to the Coca Pond, okay, page 23 to 24. Uh, only elements uh, terminating on the fit will be evaluated, and cut wheels have no difficulty values, okay? And then um, um, uh, in the current cycle, okay, uh, so please pay attention to uh, the following uh, skills, right? Fit facts, run off, um, front hand springs. Uh, uh, worth 0 0.1 points, okay? The rig backs or tempo auto, okay? 0 0.2 points, right? So for evaluating the difficulty, uh, each somersault, okay? Equivalent to 0 0.5 points, and a single somersault done in the pipe or straight position without twist will receive a bonus of 0 0.1 point, and each front somersault will receive a bonus of 0 0.1 points. Now, here is a uh, table to summarize uh, the somersault with twisting, okay, and how to evaluate the difficulty, okay. So you may take a look at uh, uh, at the text here, okay. But I think uh, the table here can uh, uh, summarize uh, all the details, okay. So if it is a double somersault, okay. So half twist zero point one. Uh, first tree is 0 0.2, second tree is 0 0.4, third tree is 0 0.6, so on and so forth. And later I will have more detailed elaboration on this. And then uh, here is about the multiple somersault with or without twist. So again, this uh, some this uh, table it summarizes uh, all the rules and regulations that we show here. Okay, so for double somersault, okay, uh, top position, okay. Uh, it don't have any uh, bonus, okay? But for pipe position, single somersault, we have bonuses of 0 0.1. Double, double somersault, we have 0 0.1. Triple, we have 0 0.2, all right? And for strict position, uh, it can up to 0 0.4 for triple somersault, okay? 0 0.2 for double somersault. And I would like to draw your attention to the last point here. Uh, in the women competition, okay, the second, um, uh, third, element with a minimum difficulty of 2.0 in one pass will receive a bonus of 1.0 point, okay? All right, here's the illustration. So on the right hand side is the uh, table that you can find uh, on the call of points, okay? It show you all the difficulty values and this commonly, the skills that we commonly see in the tumbling competitions. So I would like to draw attention on the left hand side, okay? To show you how to evaluate, how to calculate the difficulties of the tumbling skills. Now, if we're dealing with a skills, uh, full in, full out straight, okay? The two, two straight, okay? So in this case, first somersault, okay? The value is 0 0.5, okay? With the twisting value, 0 0.2, all right? Second somersault, uh, the somersault value is 0 0.5 with the twisting value, 0 0.4, okay? and at the same time, because it's a strict position, double somersault, there is a bonus of 0 0.2, okay? So the total element value is 1.8, okay? And then we have to multiply it by two. So that is 3.6, okay? Um, the reason why we multiply two is because um, um, if you check with the previous, uh, you know, uh, PowerPoint slide, show you in double somersault, the value of the element, including any twist, any bonus for position will be doubled. So if triple somersault, it will be triple. For quadruple somersault, it will be quadruple. So here, this example is a combining uh, you know, all the rules that we just discussed uh, earlier, okay, to show that um, how to calculate the individual skills in tumbling. Okay, now here is the illustration to show a uh, sotto pass, okay? And uh, so you can ignore the answer on the right hand side. So you can do the practice on the left hand side, you see um, the skills. So here you are.
Okay, in this case, it's a perfect example to show that um, if you take a look at skill number one and number four, okay, so it's different, right? Even though skill number two and number five is the same, but according to the rules, it's all right because uh, the skills before that somersault is different, okay? Skill number one is a run off, okay? Skill number four is a uh, tempo, so it's all right, okay? So it's another illustration for twisting paths, okay? So in this case, uh, it fulfilled the requirement. It got two uh, skills with twisting, okay? And also end the last, the last skills and also end in twisting, okay? With uh, at least a 360 degree. All right. Here's the last part uh, for today's uh, sharing. So it's a evaluation of execution, okay? So similar to trampoline gymnastics, uh, each skill we just evaluate uh, in the range of uh, 0 to 0 0.5 points, okay? So as an execution judge, we subtract the deduction from the maximum marks indicated by the CJP, and then uh, we, um, 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 uh, make the deduction, okay, based on the following criteria, okay. Uh, lack of form, control, high reference in each element, okay. So ranging from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5, okay. For detail, you may refer to the core of pawn, right, page 26, right. And also uh, for the landing, okay, uh, involve the lack of stability after a complete pass. Okay, so a single deduction for the grip to forge only. Okay, so here different situation, and then may have different um, deduction. Okay, so if not standing still in an upright position and storing stability uh, for approximately three seconds, there will be a deduction ranging from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So after landing, touching the track or landing zone area with one or both hands, there will be deduction of 0 0.5. After landing, touching with or following, sorry, falling to the knees, hands, and knees, front, back, or sit on the track or landing area, 1.0 uh, deduction, okay? A system from a spotter after landing, 1.0. And then after landing in the landing area or on the track, leaving the landing area or the track, or touching outside the landing area or touching the floor with any part of the body or performing an additional somersault. Again, that will be a deduction of 1.0, all right? And um, there are some uh, guidelines, right, for good forms of various uh, basic skills in tumbling. So here is example for uh, run off, okay? So a good run off, uh, we expect the arms must be straight at the end of the contact phase, and the whole body must go through the vertical on the axis of the tumbling track, and legs must join together at 90 degree, and legs must be straight until 90 degree. So for thick fat, okay, arms must be straight in the fighting phases, at the end of the contact phases, and not too apart. And legs must be straight after takeoff and keep together until 90 degree. And body should be arched according to the element. And next can be flexed during contact phase. And lastly, good reference, height and axis. And the last one is the rip back or tempo sotto. It's another skills that we commonly see in the tumbling uh, passes. Okay, arms, uh, sorry, uh, arms must be strict and legs must be strict and keep together until 90 degree. And body should be arched according to the element pie face should start after 180 degree and next can be slightly flexed during contact phase. And lastly, uh, again, good reference, height and axis. And here's the video, right, to show um, uh, I would, uh, a, a pass. And uh, again, on the right-hand side, uh, we got some uh, recommended deduction and also uh, uh, some uh, mistakes uh, that we detected right from the past, okay? And you can ignore the table first, okay? So you're just focusing on uh, the skills and later one you can check with uh, the, the recommended answer.
okay? And then there's another one, right? All right, so uh, pay attention to the lack of stability. All right, so therefore there's a deduction here, okay? So um, here's the summary. And uh, so I just um, briefly talks about um, how to evaluate the difficulty in trampoline and also have a brief introduction of uh, tumbling, okay? And uh, so I think, um, uh, for the new judges and also the experienced judges, uh, we also need to familiarize with the latest rules and regulations right, from the FIG. And uh, we also uh, are trying to attain um, the teaching and learning materials uh, through different channels. Okay? And um, uh, for me, I also uh, benefit a lot from uh, my trampoline uh, uh, the friends in the trampoline community, uh, they share a lot of useful uh, teaching materials uh, with me, okay? And uh, uh, I find it really useful, right, for me to, uh, um, for my judging career. And uh, another thing is a lifelong education, okay? So I think uh, in FIG, uh, they organize the FIG Academy on a regular basis. And in HEU, it also organize a series of uh, FIG Academy. And I think it's a good idea for us to uh, join in those uh, academies and then uh, to know the latest, um, you know, skills, theories, and techniques uh, from the experts. And uh, I think it's also useful uh, for the judges. And uh, we can even organize uh, the academy in your own fatuation, just like in Hong Kong, right? In 2018, we also organized a FIG Academy. So uh, we're grateful for the FIG experts that right? came to Hong Kong right? to share their uh, uh, professional knowledge right? with our uh, um, um, coaches and judges, okay? And uh, we can also engage with the literature okay, on sports science. We can also help us to know a little bit more about the uh, technical aspects of the skills, right? Which may include in the biomechanics, uh, physiologies, anatomy, so on and so forth. And lastly, uh, even though I already emphasized in the really beginning of this uh, lecture, that is practice, right? trying to practice more, okay? Video practicing or, you know, uh, trying to accumulate more judging experience in the competitions. And uh, those are the key uh, for you to acquire and also to maintain your judging qualifications, right? And finally, before I end this uh, section, I would like to um, uh, thanks right, the following people. Um, they uh, really helped me a lot in the process and they also helped me to prepare for those uh, materials that I use in this uh, sharing section. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, the president and the general secretary, as well as the EC and TC of the AGU, right, with their support. And uh, so we managed to have a series of uh, seminar, right, for the judges in the Asian communities. And in particular, I would like to thank my colleagues in the AGU TRATC, right, including our president, Professor Liu, and our members, uh, Katerina, Olga, and also senior, right? And uh, also throughout the years, um, uh, I also benefit a lot from the FIG judges courses. So I would also like to thank uh, the FIG TC expert uh, who organized the uh, uh, FIG judges courses uh, for our fatuations and also the, uh, for the Asian fatuations, including our president, uh, Horst Kunzi, uh, Christopher, Professor Liu, Nikolai, Mr. Seaman. And also um, in the FIG academies, uh, we got a lot of experts right, who share their professional knowledge with us, uh, including John, okay, uh, Chris, uh, Hardy, right, and uh, Michael, um, uh, Professor uh, Keith Musso, and also uh, Mr. Wang right, from New Zealand. Right? They uh, really help us a lot uh, in the process. And last but not least, I also like to thank 
the following people uh, to share their materials with, with me and also help me to prepare for today's um, uh, seminar, including uh, Francesca okay, from Italy and also um, Mr. Ding, Mr. Lee and Mr. Liu from China, uh, Peter from Great Britain, uh, Patrick Nam from Hong Kong, and then uh, Juppa and also uh, Fernando from Portugal. And lastly, I would like to thank the gymnasts who uh, help to perform the basic skills right, uh, in the video, okay? Xu uh, Yue from China, okay? And uh, of course, I want to thank a lot of people, but then the time is limited and I may not be able to name everybody in this uh, acknowledgement. But I'm really grateful for your support uh, in the past uh, 10 or 20 years. And finally, uh, welcome to join us. And I wish we do have more judges from our Asian community right, uh, in the next cycle. And uh, let's work together to promote the sport right, in the region. So thank you very much. And that's it for today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fong. Very nice uh, lecture. Just now, uh, Dr. Fong talked about the uh, relation measure of uh, difficulty score. Uh, how to recognize and uh, writing down the skill. A guideline to judging and uh, some contents related to goal points and the regulation. He used some cases with video to explain how to calculate difficulty score of one skill and one routine. All the explanation is very clear and uh, logical. In some important uh, competition, such as uh, Olympic game, or World Championship, uh, qualifying World Cup for Olympic game, the difficulty judges is uh, normally appointed by TC. And uh, D1 normally is category one because during the competition, difficulty judges uh, determine whether the competition goes well. So the difficulty judges is uh, required to calculate the difficulty accurately in the shortest possible time. So it is uh, essential skill of a judge to calculate the difficulty points uh, accurately. I think new judges have to spend some time training these abilities. If you want to pass the examination of international judges courses, and uh, if you want to be an excellent judge, you must have these abilities, I think. Uh, also today, Dr. Fong uh, introduced the tumbling, uh, some call points, general rule, and give some example how to evaluate uh, execution and how to calculate difficulty score. I'm sure today's uh, lecture will be very, very helpful to our judges, especially new judges. Okay, again, thank you, Dr. Fong, for your wonderful the lecture. And uh, I think you make a very good uh, preparation for this lecture. Thank you all for your watching. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.